Klaus Nowinski, one of the chief meteorologists uh, in AccuWeather, uh, which is headquartered in State College, Pennsylvania. It's a very good place for anyone with a with a starting meteorology career, just finished college, awesome place. It's, I've never been there, but I would love to go there. It's my dream to work for AccuWeather, actually. It's been a dream of mine since, uh, like, 2008. Since uh, I was, like, 16 years old, it's been a dream of mine to work there. Well, being a weather, forecare, ca weather forecaster has been a dream of mine since I was, like, a kid. I love the weather, and I love talking about weather. It's one of my big passions. But I forecasted, uh... The chance of a squall line hitting the northeast, uh, especially State College, Pennsylvania, between 4 and 6 a.m., and New York City between 6 and 8. And this model, the GFS, uh, initially did not show that. It flopped back and forth, and now it's going back to that scenario again. See, this is a uh, this is 6 a.m., this is 8, and you'll see the squall. It's going to hit right around that time. See, um, this run came out at uh, 5 p.m., so this is so this is midnight, midnight, uh, so this is 24 hours out, 48, uh, this is going to be, 48, this is going to be, this is going to be midnight, 6 a.m., around 8, so the squall should come around, so th this will be noon, 6 a.m., so the squall, can you see where the wind's come um, north, northwest right here, and then go up, that's where the squall is going to be, right here, so the squall will hit up between 6 and 8. Most likely 7 a.m. the squall will hit New York City. State College, the squall should hit around, according to the model, should hit around uh, just after midnight, between 2 and 4 a.m. Um, and remember I showed you my previous model run um, with earlier today about the storm, uh, hold on, and how this storm right here is going to be a little more potent. Um, and this storm here is going to be yeah, a little more potent in this storm. Here, that's all the way down here. It's going to be a little further to the north. Um, well, let's click the current run, and let's see what changes have been made. Um, as I said, the storm is going to be a little more potent, uh, and uh, this is current run, actually, and uh, further to the north. But in the end, I think this storm, since it's coming out of the out of the Midwest, and and the trough is like this, there's a chance it will form like around this area. If it forms here, it will go further to the south, if it forms here, it will go further to the north. My belief is, is it's going to pass like this, and it's going to come right off the coast of southern Massachusetts, Connecticut. Well, I think what's going to happen is from the storm, it's going to drop rain. I, it's going to be like a mess for the northeast, especially for New York City, Hartford, um, Boston, Providence. It's going to be a wintry mess. And for New York City, it's going to be rain changing to snow. Um, so it'll end as a little bit of snow in New York City, probably three to six inches for the city. Boston will probably get something around a foot. Um, but... The worst of the storm, I think, will be southern New Hampshire, most southern point of Maine, most likely, um, what I believe. And uh, the storm should be, I'm thinking, somewhere between here and here. So it's well, uh, this model is well within the range of what I'm thinking. I, I, here's where I want this storm. I want this storm to go a little further to the south, like here, because I want snow in New York City model is not good for snow. You can see the rain snowing right over New York City. I'm going to temperature now. This is weather.cardio.edu, by the way. Um, see? You can see mid-30s, upper 30s. It's going to start out as rain in New York City and end as uh, snow. So this is going to be... Oh, can see? I'll show you. And then, so the, it's going to be back still causing some precipitation. So it's going to end as snow. We should get, so based on what this model is forecasting, we should get about, based on this model, at least 6 to 12 inches in New York City. If it's going to be snowing at this time, we should get 6 to 12. Uh, if the storm is a little further to the south, like if we get the red, and yet temperatures are in the 20s, big accumulations. I, 
now I'm going to go to the classic that's weather on the ground. Um, their model runs go, go, go out a little bit longer, but they're very, very inaccurate. They are unreliable at that time. Okay, so look, I'm going to go here and model maps, and I am going to click, uh, I'm going to go to the GFS page. show you what what the, the further out is going to say. Because the AO is going to go very negative according to the to the to NOAA page, to the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. The Arctic Oscillation is going to go very negative and that sounds good. F that is very good for an Arctic outbreak to develop if that happens. But let's go to run and let's go to 165 hours out. If I showed you there's gonna be a weak storm around this time. So what do I think we're gonna get from this? See there's uh, the low is gonna be right here. And let's check precipitation type. It's gonna be snow, I could guarantee it. Even yeah, see it's snow. And MSL or mesoscale surface mesoscale surface the level it's going to be a little more potent, I can feel, because as Stephen Boyle described, my friend Stephen Boyle, there's some sort of anomaly here, and uh, it will make the storm intensify a little stronger, and uh, and it might turn into a pretty powerful storm, hopefully. So if you want to uh, see Stephen Boyle's videos, please type in uh, Stephen Boyle, New England, please. Uh, he's a very good uh, meteorologist, uh, starting out meteorologist as I am, and if he ever goes into the meteorology field, I'll be honored to work alongside him, because I think there's a good chance that we will both make it to the meteorology field. Okay. Now we're going to go back to, that's the storm I was talking about. I think we're going to, I'm predicting I've not seen this on the precipitation site. I bet it's going to say sleep or freezing rain. I'm surprised if it says rain. And it's saying rain. It should at least put sleet or freezing rain, because that's going to be a likely scenario to what that model is saying. Okay. See? Rain? Yes. Measle scale surface level. Okay. Or, see? Right here. Big storm. Immediately 204. This is... Uh, so this going to be heavy. Okay. Right here. Snow. This should be now snow or... S definitely snow for Boston, but Boston, uh, the onshore winds might uh, cause rain because usually uh, Boston's accumulations are very dependent on the sea breeze uh, or the coastal front. Sea breeze, <laughs> that's in Florida, but it's a similar thing. The onshore winds, because the Atlantic Ocean is very warm, maritime air coming into the cold, that could hold down the accumulations or completely change it over to rain especially southeastern Massachusetts, for the short term at least. Uh, let's check R2H levels. I'm fortunately thinking this storm is going to come like this and do something like that. I'm, that's what I do not want. That's what I'm thinking at this time. Based on what I see in the models, that could always change. I really want to see something like this. Like I just, and then like, I want something like this. This is what you really stall, sits out here for a bit, and it goes out. <laughs> that will be a, uh, my mouth will water. A lot of people's mouths will water at this. Snow lovers especially. Skiers are going to love this. And let's go out further. Let's go to winds and knots. Because this will show s exactly surface. Like, see? You want this low here, not so close to the cape want a good storm, you do not want the low to be so far inland, to be so far to the coast. You want it like here. You want the low coming in like that, not like this. It's too close to the coast, be too much warm air a lot, and even if you're below freezing, you're going to get a, like ice, not snow. Sorry if I'm par pooping your party, but that's what's going to happen. And now this storm is going to go up into... I'm assuming uh, into 
Nova Scotia. And then it's gonna mess up with the Arctic ice somewhere up here. Nova Scotia, yep. Exactly as I thought. That looks, see? This is gonna happen if the NAO goes neg NAO goes negative. This is very bad for Arctic ice. This is a um, disaster for Arctic ice if this happens. A disaster, disaster. This is that's something I do not want to think about. This is gonna this is gonna kill the Arctic ice. I mean, look, this is the five four zero zero going that far north. That is gonna absolutely kill Arctic ice. I don't even want to think about the scenario. That's Greenland right here, and that's how far north. Uh, oh, that's going to be a disaster waiting to happen. I do not want to think about Greenland losing so much sea ice, but of course it's going to happen. Oh, see the 5400 line going way up to Greenland. And this storm, I'm assuming, is going to be a big storm for the East Coast. If, well, this is 324 hours out. Very not reliable at this time. Oh, okay. Now the Arctic air is now once again coming. Based on what I'm seeing, this is the 5400 line under 32 degree line. Snow is going to be here, rain is going to be on the coast. Let's see what the model is thinking. Yes. The model is thinking exactly that. 360, the precipitation will shift off the coast. Uh, this is lake effect snow. The merging, that's not going to happen. Okay. Because MSL will show exactly what's going to happen. So we can probably look in here. Yeah. Okay. Now let's go to 384 as far as it goes. We actually, uh, what this model is thinking is a, a blocking pattern. This is showing a blocking pattern, and we might get a big storm from this. We might get a blizzard. Um, but I am thinking that um, from this storm, here's what I really wanted to do. I wanted to do something like this. Go straight, and then just go off like that. I do not, even if it means lower accumulation, I would sacrifice snow accumulation for Arctic ice because I do not want to see our sea, level, sea levels rise. I would rather have 6 to 12 inches and not have 3 feet, but keep the Arctic ice because this is very important for us. Um, well, thank you for watching, and hopefully, hopefully that that uh, that storm going that far inland will not happen. That is going to be a disaster for Arctic ice. And that is what killed the Arctic sea ice back in 2010, 2011. Hopefully we don't have a repeat.